So, uh, Dylan, hear me out. Okay. Vaporeon. No, I... <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Henry, and I'm one of your co-hosts for the Hear Me Out podcast. And I'm Dylan, and I'm the other co-host. So, so Dylan, who are our sponsors today? Oh, so, well, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Mr. Beast. He's not actually sponsored us yet, but we really hope that one day, he'll, you know, he'll 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 listen in. He'll come through. You know, we, we're delivering quality Vaporeon content here. Yeah, we love you, Mr. Um, Beast. I, I really do. He's doing really good things. Yeah, yeah. You know? We're the Hear Me Out podcast, and we're mainly going to be discussing films and movies that we enjoy. Uh, but, of course, we're going to, like, branch out to other topics as well, like maybe games and other fun things or our hobbies and stuff that we find interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dylan, what are our topics for today? Yes, so starting off probably with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, then moving on to the link topic of animation styles um, and in, in modern media. Uh, and then finally on to the implications of AI on the animation industry, which is quite a, a contentious topic at the moment, quite a big topic, but pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, all, all great topics. So, yeah. Yeah, so you saw the movie, right? I hope. I did. I you did, you yes. saw Spider Man, right? I did see Spider Man. It, okay, so overall thoughts? Overall thoughts. I mean, I I am really probably preaching to the choir here. It's a very, very, very good film. Um, yeah, what, probably one of the best animated films of all time. I guess that links into uh, our, our, one of our later topics. But... It, it was number one on Letterbox for a while. You know what Letterbox is? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it number is one. anymore. Yeah. Um, it like went all the way to number one but i think that's like crazy. initial hype as well and stuff yeah yeah obviously but still that's very impressive that shows i mean how do you think it compares to the first film uh, in, in terms of uh, i i hate quality. this because like generally talking about sequels is always like this like evaluating sequels always has like the the little like ah but it's a sequel thing it's like mm. if if we just took movies in isolation, then it's yeah. always like a little bit different to how you evaluate it as a part of like a bigger franchise or I as, guess so. as not the original, right? Like I think that Into the Spider Verse did something so. I, I mean, this is a thought that like everyone said, but like to reiterate it, I guess it's it's such a like like almost revolutionary like animation animated film mm -hmm. that it. And and because of how unique it was, it gets so many points for that. And on top of how unique it was, it was also such a good film with good music, good animation, plot, yeah, everything. Yeah, like. yeah. And uh, yeah. So so I think that because it gets that, I can't say that the the sequel was better than the original, but I can say that it was like a really really worthy successor, and that. Uh -huh. If I was evaluating it on its own, I might oh, I might even say that it was better. Like okay, in isolation. but in, in terms of uh, the originality, is kind of, of what you're saying. It, it, the first film was kind of groundbreaking in some ways. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I'd, I'd agree with that. I think the soundtrack they were able to do really well again, and I think overall I like the. I it's not directly related to the movie. I. I or yeah, directly about the movie, but I think overall I prefer the new soundtrack. Mm, I, I think there are more. I would agree. I think Hummingbird's yeah. a banger. I think uh, the uh, what's the other one that I really really like? Um, uh, checking now awkwardly. Self love. I love self love. I've been like listening to that song every day. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the first. Uh, what annihilate. Yeah, and I um, really also Mona Lisa. I don't know if you. Yeah, I like Mona Lisa. I, I like yeah. the whole soundtrack. Well, I, I think as well the um, the way they were able to get on like uh, I suppose more classic uh, hip hop artists like Nas as well. Mm. That's very cool in terms of uh, Miles and and representation of that sort of community as well. So, what do you think about the the casting? Like, I mean, a lot of returning faces from the original. Well. 
I was going to say faces, but actually voices from the original. Right? Voices, yeah, voices, yeah. It's, it's more accurate, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what's your, your overall question. Is it just what I think? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think that, I think that there are a lot of examples of, like, celebrity castings for these kind of films that are just, mm. like, just for the sake of it. Whereas I actually think that almost the entire cast from the original and the new ones are, like, almost perfectly casted. Like of course there are other options, right? But I think that the yeah. the voices they went for and the personalities that that they're trying to convey with the voices works really well. Like I think that like Jake Johnson as is my like is uh what is it Peter B Parker? Like he really he's is. Stuck, yeah. Like I don't know if you've ever seen New Girl. No, I have not. But like uh. he he's such a like he like exemplifies that like I don't know kind of broken man. Like he has that that vibe. Okay. And it, it works really well. Like that almost like ex Playboy broken vibe that just like makes uh-huh. sense for this character. And that's just from the okay. original cast. And then like the new cast, I actually I love Oscar Isaac. I love his voice. I love all the stuff he's been doing with like all these superhero films. Like Yeah, he's he's been very good. I mean, even in Star Wars. His character of Poe Dameron I, I think was one of the few good bits of yeah. the, the sequel. <laughs> The, the, very, the very few. And that line, the, the line, somehow Palpatine returned, I'm so happy that he got to deliver it because it's it's probably my favorite line in cinema history <laughs> because of how bad it really is. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But also, um, like, Moon Knight? Oh, I don't know. Moon Knight, very. I think that show is so slept on. I, I really, really liked it. I think the only thing that lets it down is the the ending yes, right because then it just becomes big cg kaijus yeah in a victorian boxing match like but i like that now that they've experimented with it right that they're going to mm-hmm. get some feedback on it and they've kept this yeah. like central they've kept the central characters uh, at least the spe- central yeah. main character right and mm-hmm. then they can go from there and like go on with his personality and do other stuff and don't have to like i don't think that i have a feeling that I think they are filming, right? Moon Knight 2. But if they ever come back to it, I don't think they're going to overdo the CGI stuff again. I think they've learned their lesson. I hope. Um, I, I guess back on oh, yeah. Spider-Man casting. Um, I think he, uh, who voices uh, Miles? It's uh, uh, Sh- um, Shamik Sh- Sh- Moore. Sh- Sh- yes. Shamik Sh- Sh- Moore. I can't pronounce names very well. Uh, Sh- Shamik Moore. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's gonna come knocking at your door. Yeah, yeah. I, I, to be fair, I don't know how to say Shamik more. Shamik. That sounds more correct. I don't know. I'm, I'm very sorry as well. Um, he's, he's very good. He's very, very good. I think he characterizes him very well, and he's, he's got that kind of awkwardness that is very characteristic of Miles. Yeah. Even in the interviews, have you seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. I have. Yeah. And then. I would like to talk about Haley Steinfield a little bit and like praise mm-hmm. her for being the absolute queen that she is. I don't really have much more to say that's like just uh, praising she's... her, but like, yeah, yeah, she's celebrity crush. Like, I love Oscar Isaac and I love cele- Haley Steinfield. I'm just like, well, you know, I guess they're in the same film, so I will watch a lot of it. <laughs> okay, why don't uh... we get on to our spoiler segment then? Yeah, why why not? No, I don't I don't okay. think there's anything more general to say. So if you haven't seen the film yet for whatever reason, go you know, watch it. Just just go and watch it. You're really you are missing out. If if you're listening to this podcast and you like this kind of stuff, you don't really have a good reason to have not seen it. Yeah. But you know, there are always good reasons, but you should go and watch it. Yeah, go watch it. Um, uh if you haven't seen the original, I don't know how you haven't seen the original. Um, but go watch the original first and then go watch this and then, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then get ready to watch the next one next year. Do you think it will be next year? Oh yeah. Did you, did you hear about the, the staff members coming out and saying like, they're heavily overworked and like, I, I didn't, quit. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. They, a lot of people quit and a lot of like, they were really, really, uh, like, really pushed to meet deadlines and stuff. And because of that, people are like now like going, I think they should delay the next movie because how are you making that movie? I, yeah. I think another person who worked on the show has also come out and said that uh, there is no way they're releasing the third movie 
on the time frame that they say they are. Like there's oh, no. just not enough time to release it, which is fine, right? Because I would rather them spend as much time as possible and give the people working on it as much like breaks as they need so that the yeah. final quality is as good as it can be. Exactly. You don't want them to fumble on the last yeah. hurdle, really. I mean, if this movie's bad, oh my goodness. Oh, That'd be no. so depressing. Exactly. Because a cliffhanger, you can't... Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it'd be so sad <laughs> if that were not like concluded in a nice way. But it's not hard, no. right? Like, I don't think they have to do much. I think they've got their like what works, like this art style that works. They're gonna keep yeah. doing it. They're not gonna throw that away. But I don't mm-hmm. actually think they have to do too much with this final story because they've already set most of it up, right? Because Miles is now this person who's going to defy his destiny or defy what yeah. his destiny should be. And, according to yeah, Mikkel. According to the canon. And people have done a lot of theories about how the canon stuff is like BS, right? It's all... Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so it's a matter of literally... I think like they, I think the bare minimum is they keep the art style and then they, they meet up, like the group meet up, and they fight some villains and they win. Like that's the bare minimum. They're going to do more than that. But I even think that the bare minimum might... It might not be the spectacular ending that we deserve and want, but it might be mm-hmm. enough, which is saying something because that means that like the first and second movies have like set up so much and like have done so much for the characters. They don't need to do yeah. too much more. Yeah, be. no, I, I'd, 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 well, I'd agree with that. I, I'd be disappointed if yeah, it were yeah. just kind of a... Uh a very simplistic story but I, it's going to be difficult probably to follow those two but i think i think if they delay it and they're able to sort of put the work into it that it needs mm. they can a, def they've definitely got the skill to do it yeah there's a lot of work like the amount of animators the the the, the amount of stuff they've thought out did you know that there are actually different versions of the film like out there like airing is it the the bit with lila that's one bit uh, that's one bit that's one bit. there are there are multiple they're, they're more, bits they're more where different they... changes yeah oh the more, hell? there's a list like i think if you search it up on reddit like there is a list oh that someone has God. compiled and there's probably more that they haven't figured out yet but there are just like slight variations between each version and i just love that i think that that's like i don't know that's crazy yeah does that mean you have to watch it again? <laughs> I did. I watched it's it twice. I didn't part. notice. You, mm. Well, I mean, I watched it in the same cinema, so I don't think there'd be much change. Okay, but, I suppose but, probably the same. But the but still, even I don't think it's too noticeable unless you're being told that they're different. If that makes sense, because I've yeah. seen the side by sides of like the Lila shot. I did not notice uh-huh. initially. I was like, wait, and then I watched it again. I was like, oh yeah. But in cinemas, if I was shown that same shot, I don't think I would like even realize no because yeah among the bigger picture it's kind of a pretty small thing but that's that's really interesting that they did that yeah that's very cool that's the kind of thing you can't do unless it's like animation of this style right where it's meant to be a little bit a little bit random in moments and like you can change Mm -hmm. things up and stuff or animation in general right because you can't really like if you've got a live action you can't really release different versions because you'd have to get the actors to like redo their shots and then for what value whereas like these kind of animated films you you don't have to change what the person says you can just reanimate it how you want to and change it slightly and i don't really know yeah. why they had to though like as much as like i'm pr- i like i praise them for all of this stuff well, why did they do it why do you think they did it i I'm, i was just wondering that whether it was uh, like an artistic decision or, or whether it was You've got to imagine that it was, right? You wouldn't put two different clips. Uh, no, no, it's it's intentional, in, that's for sure. Yeah. But why that just because it's intentional doesn't mean that they needed to do it. Like, just because they did it doesn't mean that there was a reason or a good reason to do it, right? They mm. might have just done it because it was fun or cool. But like, is there a message? Is there some kind of hidden meaning? I suppose you could see it as the kind of like variants like multiverse yeah. that they've been um 
you know, that's the whole point point of the film, really. I, I don't know. Maybe it's to also show the kind of holes in the the canon theory that mm. Miguel is putting forward. I mean, that's a, that's a Ooh. big, big reach. Oh, I like that. I like but that. That's a reach. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I I, I get it. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of uh, multiverse, uh, there's a direct reference to the MCU. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. So this is a MCU movie. This is a technically. It, it is now, right? I don't think the first movie really had anything. Like it, we had Stan Lee, Rip Stan Lee, mm, Legend. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like he he made. I think wasn't that his last cameo? Uh, no, I believe his last cameo... Okay, in a Marvel film, yes, I believe his last cameo ever was in the Teen Titans oh, film, okay. which is kind of funny, kind of sad as well. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I, I, I would need to fact check that. I think in yeah. a big film, I think that was his last... I, I b- remember hearing that, but I, I... Yeah, fact check, we need to do that. That's mm. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, MCU connection. Um, maybe this Spider-Man shows up to fight Kang. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I wonder what they'll do with Kang now. Because they've kind of... T- oh, well, I don't think we should go down that. Uh, no, <laughs> but, but, let's keep it um, roughly on track. But the it's kind of interesting because I think we're going to go into like animation styles as the second topic, but just before that, what are your thoughts on this whole, like... So, I think a few movies have done it now. Lego Movie's done it. A few other movies have done it. Where mm. you kind of cameoed with live action. Yeah. What What are your like, thoughts on that? But not just for a cameo. Is it possible... Like, as a film. I think they've done it, right? What was that film? That it's was like... uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's... Oh. Uh an example of, I'm thinking of you know putting cartoons i'm thinking of uh, the smurfs smurfs uh and alvin and the chipmunks um true yeah yeah i get that's like 3d yeah but yeah animation right because roger rabbit was 2d animation plus people uh, i see i don't know if, have you watched it no i've never never it's it's a, it's a good film as well um is it a new one Oh, no, no. It's like 1980-something, I think. But So so basically, they've just like stopped doing that, right? Because, like, yeah, they've done, like, an- like, 3D models and stuff with humans, like, like Smurfs and other... And mm, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, they've done that. I think they've stopped doing that as well, though, right? I don't... I can't think of a film that's recent that's done that, really. Um... Having, like, a whole character be... Yeah, like, one character be animated in this film. Oh, I guess, like, if you count, like, the Little Mermaid and, like, those kind of a CGI creatures. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on your definition. Yeah, right? it's all definition. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I was just trying to lead on a point about how could you create... Is there a new kind of subgenre of animation where you're, like, almost creating half of the movie? Or could you do something interesting, like, where the world you're in is animated but the characters are live action or or the other way around like an entirely mm. animated film but all the backing is like from real shots i don't i don't think something like that's been tried uh, or anything i don't know if it worked no, i just like directly. the thought it'd be really hard to yeah. make i feel like yeah i guess um i don't know i that'd be interesting to see i i'm i'm sure something similar exists but it's not definitely a common thing. No, it's not. Yeah. But it's always fun but, to yeah, see was, cameos. Yeah, like, uh, or is it D- Donald Glover in uh, Spider-Verse? Uh, and he'd also been in Homecoming, right? One of the homes. In the first. It is Homecoming, yeah. One of the homes. Uh, no, one no, of the it, homes of all It time. is the first home. Yeah, it, the first one. The first one. Yeah, Homecoming. Um, that's pretty cool. I like Donald Glover. I like Donald Glover. I like the Prowler. Um, there are lots of Prowlers. You think there's like a Prowler city <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> what did what did Gwen call it? 
Welcome to the Spider uh, Spider society. society. Yeah. Is that a reference to something? I think you know more comics than I do. I'm not sure about directly, because... It sounds really familiar. Maybe. Because they, they, like, the Council of Kangs, that's uh, that's from yeah. the comics, and the Council of Reeds as well. I don't know about... Sp Spider Society, actually, yeah, probably from the Spider-Verse comics. I, I would assume it is, right? But do so. they... Is that like a name so. bomb? I feel like if you're like a hardcore comics fan, um, it's something that you would be like really happy to hear. Yeah, it it's a thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. Yeah, it, it's literally like straight from the comics, like Miguel O'Hara created it. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Nice name drop. Very drawing. nice. Yeah, I have arachnophobia, so not going to spider society. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Anytime soon? Mm -hmm. Would you let the spider bite you then? No. If you knew it would give you powers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> would I let you, a, I guess, if, a random it, spider? It wouldn't ever get close enough to bite me because I'd like scream mm -hmm. and run away. Okay. I'm not destined to be Spider Man. Your canon event is running away from the spider. Oh, then. we don't talk about what my canon event is. There are. Okay, okay, yeah. There, <laughs> there, there's many, <laughs> many things to choose from. <laughs> uh, okay, Dylan, since you brought it up, what's your canon event? What's my canon event? Um. See, I maybe I haven't had my canon event oh, yet. Oh, okay. There's not like a standout standout thing, I would say. That's fair. Have you seen the memes though? I love the memes. The kind of the memes are good. <laughs> I have seen like ten variations on the one where it's like, uh, me being single is a canon event, or the universe yeah. like imploding when I get a girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. It was a canon event, etc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Makes so sense. maybe that is my canon event. Maybe, maybe it makes sense that it's showing up on your feed. It's trying to tell you something. It's targeted. It's oh targeted. no. The algorithm oh, knows. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You got any closing thoughts on Spider Man? What did you think about mm. Spot as a villain? Spot as a villain? So I thought he was like funny, right? That was, mm. like, my initial uh, reaction to him. I also really like how they did the portal stuff. Like, I thought that there was yeah. actually a decent... It seemed like there was decent thought into just, like, how the portals mechanically worked. It didn't just, mm -hmm. like, seem like a random whatever went in came out, right? It was, like, yeah, some yeah. stuff felt thought out in terms of how they coordinated the spots. Um, so in terms of like mechanically as a villain, I think he's really cool. I think like becoming a giant one spot and then, you know, getting revenge, I think cool. Mm. Um, am I, and I, I think that his motivations are pretty interesting too. Um, and he did the whole like speech about like he created him and he cre like they created each other. Right. So they're like, they're nemesis. Yeah. Nemesi. So it's like, yeah. So Yeah cool villain i just i think he's more of a means to an end than like the villain. exactly yeah i mean i i asked that kind of in, in the in the sense that i think he was kind of more of a plot device yeah then i think because he, he yeah he, he's he accomplishes what they need I mean, he's still interesting yeah. in, in himself but i think as as a uh, motivation i'm not sure being hit by a bagel no, but that wasn't uh, the motivation, yeah. though. Like the bagel. No, no, was no. I, okay. Yeah. It was. It was him reaching for, uh, like, a villain origin story, right? He yeah. wanted to be meaningful, to be worth something. Yeah. Um. But like the whole, yeah. the whole like you know losing his family and friends and like being, like, scarred basically by Spider Man's yeah. actions. Like I think that's pretty. Like, that's enough to push someone to become slightly, like, insane. And then now that he's, like, got a shit ton of power, I think power and insanity just, like, make him a really good, like, at least, like, endgame fight villain, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I think yeah, yeah. I think the Miles and the team have kind of got to do a shit ton of stuff before they get to him or somehow, like, yeah, before they fight him for real. 
but uh yeah like i don't think his arc's going to end in a way that's like meant to resolve him being a good character like i think he's not the person that needs to change i think miguel o'hara is the mm. person they're going to focus on in terms in the next movie for like yeah. resolving villain arcs it'd be cool if no they de- definitely yeah. Mm. yeah shall we move on to our next topic sure yeah uh, which was animation styles, and uh, it was more in the sense of uh, looking at choppy animation. Yeah. Right. As opposed to, and... I, I think, I think so. Where this topic stemmed from was like, I think we'd had a really big era for the for the last few decades of like this very standardized like animation style. And we still have it, right? Uh, have you mm. seen Elementals? Elementals. The newest one. Mm, I don't. The newest Disney one. It's about the. The, the one with the fire woman and the waterman. Yeah. And oh, no, I have not. <laughs> uh, do, uh, do you plan I didn't to know see it existed. It? Oh, you didn't know it existed? I, I well, you just said so. the fireman. It and... existed until I saw the trailer oh, okay. in the cinema. I see. That was the only. That's when I first became aware of it. So I think the marketing around the film's a little bit difficult, but basically Disney have done another an allegory Maybe. for racism in society. Yes, uh, so they've they've kind of done that again. Uh, but you know Zootopia, right? Like, I, yeah, it's not the same. I think it's like done it slightly differently, but it is the same, and it's also the same in the sense that it looks like every other animated film that's come from those studios recently. Yeah, it's not so distinctive, really. Yeah, they they just, like... I mean, it, it works, right? And it's good for most people. And you can still appreciate moments. I think that, in general, you can still, like, watch those films and, like, be awed by some cool, like, you know, cool, like, big water wave from Moana or whatever. Or, yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and, but... Okay, yeah. So, anything to add about those type of films? I, I mean, those types of films, there was nothing really which stood out to me. I, this is just from watching the trailer, obviously. But it just seemed so standard and just very, I don't know, like, boring. Yeah, generic <laughs> it's, it's, standard. It, yeah. yeah, very generic. I mean, yeah. It, and the, the thing is, like, I only ever watch those kind of films based on word of mouth, right? I need someone to go watch it and tell me that it's worth watching. But they never tell me it's worth watching because of how it's animated. They always tell me it's worth watching because it's something like, uh, what do you call it, Uh, Encanto. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. like Coco. Like when it's about the story. When it's about how good the story is. And some I give it to them. There are some really good stories. like And some really good, like, music and fun moments. And, like, I... But... In terms of just isolating, like, how it's animated, I don't think I've been impressed by, like, Disney or Pixar in recent years. Yeah, it's it's not what you go to watch the film for, as, as you're saying. It's 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 like a means of conveying the story, right? It, maybe it has, as you're saying, yeah, cool parts, but that's not what you're watching for. Um, they, they all sort of have a similar-ish style, it seems, now, as well. Mm. Uh, I guess I'm thinking of like, yeah, Coco and Kanto, pretty similar-ish. Like, obviously, it's not the same, but yes, and they they do do interesting stuff with like exploring cultural elements mm. and like implementing oh, definitely. them. Definitely, yeah, and I yeah, like I think they do try to do different things, and I I like it for that. But again, I think our focus is on animation style, and I think that in terms of that, there's not been really any. Um, innovation on that front for those type of films so uh what what animated thing has impressed you recently and you're allowed to say spider-man <laughs> i i think you know my answer then i i because <laughs> yeah there, there's stuff that i i do need to go and watch which i think you've seen like um the, the new puss in boots film oh uh Oh. Which yeah, just meant to be very, very good. It's so uh, good. It's so good. It's just 
the thing I wish that I didn't listen to anyone, but if I didn't listen to anyone, I wouldn't have gone watch it. But everyone yeah. who watched it was telling me like it was really good, so like gave me the mm-hmm. push to go watch it. But wow, yeah. like I don't think it does anything super super unique, but it does. It like has a cool story and it has puss as like a cool character, but it like just just by taking your usual like animation style, you know, taking that like mm-hmm. usual Shrek formula or whatever, or like you know, like because it's from the Shrek verse, right? Shrek verse. Yeah. Shrek-verse. <laughs> Shrek-verse. Is that a thing now? No. Well, I've made it a thing. It's the okay. Shrek verse, right? It's the Shrek verse. It's the Kung Fu Panda. Like DreamWorks, I, actually, I'll give credit to DreamWorks. I really like what DreamWorks does usually, and like mm. so it it takes that usual style and then just adds this like storybook s like like what you were saying choppy animation style to it so like even yeah. the big fight scenes you can see like the frames and it just i don't know like it it feels like puss is coming out of and and the whole shrek franchise is meant to be like all these fairy tale characters right that are like kind of uh they they're like uh parodies of the fairy tale genre right mm-hmm. so it just yeah, makes yeah. sense that this Puss in Boots movie about a cat that uses a sword just feels like a like a storybook coming to life and like yeah it's just so and not just the animation the characters the new characters that they introduce do feel like these like over the top larger than life characters just just mm-hmm. coming to life and like like living in this world and yeah just the just felt really good for guy. me yeah i've seen clips of yeah the the no oh, is it death it's death right the the wolf yeah yeah that's a spoiler well <laughs> he was he was everywhere for some time so it's it's pretty hard to, yeah no 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 don't worry uh, avoid but yeah I, I i mean i i guess that's the kind of film that you would have people um they're saying, oh yeah, the story's great, and the animation is also really cool. Whereas some of the other film, like no one's gonna advertise Elemental to you by uh, saying, oh, the animation's really cool because it's just so standard now. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah, and and I mean maybe we'll have uh, have it that lots of films adopt this uh, sort of choppy animation style. Also, Elemental's reviews are actually not bad. That's are they? Because, but it's not bad, but that's the whole like, like mid. I actually think oh, that like man. the whole allegory for like racism is is paying off. But uh, okay. But I wouldn't go watch the movie for the the water boy and fire girl. I'd go watch the movie because I think that the the characters might be interesting. Mm. Oh, the story is interesting. It's not for like cool fire people and mm. cool water people. And and the other thing is. So, do you know how much uh, the budget for this movie was, Elemental? No idea. It's about 200 million. 200 mil. Which is about standard for, like, most of these kind of animated Disney and and Pixar films and stuff. Like, uh, Inside Out was 175 mil. Uh, Light Lightyear was 200 mil. But do you know how much it costs to make Spider-Man? I I wouldn't know an exact number. I I feel like give it's me, gonna be num- more. Give me a guess. I feel like it'll be more. Let's say two fifty. Oh, more. More. No. Like a lot more. No, less. Less. Yeah, I was saying more as in shocked that you thought more. Oh, okay. No, no. no. Okay. It, it costs. I get the, the amount. Of... Okay. Uh, sorry. Go, so How much did it cost then? A hundred mil. Hundred mil. Hundred mil, half the amount. Oh, bruh. Okay, granted, we haven't seen Elemental, right? So we're not gonna like. Yeah. But it makes sense in a in a way, but it also doesn't. In 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 my head, I guess I thought there would have been more people working on. Spider Verse. I this is from a very naive point of view. I, I don't know how were. many people it takes I think to there, make a film like Elemental. I think I think there are more people working on the Spider Man movie. I guess they cost less than them. They do. They cost less, and also the I think that the software costs less as well. Uh huh. 
and also of course we're we're not accounting for marketing costs for both of these movies. Yeah. But yeah. of course I also assume the Disney movie has uh, been marketed a lot more. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I just think that like putting money into these like super high res, super high quality animated like films. Yeah, like sometimes you're gonna do well, but putting all this money in to like a movie like Lightyear, that did not do well. No, someone no well high up person got fired, right? The person who saved uh, Toy Story two. Yeah. Because it was on a computer. He got fired for it. Mm-hmm. Is I don't I guess it's it's kind of fair, but it's also not all on her. It's not one person making a film. Well, they didn't fire just her, no. I thought they fired her. No, I mean obviously they will have fired yeah. like quite a few people. Did you watch um, the Super Mario movie? No. I got, Did you? I, I didn't, but I saw a lot of clips. I've seen quite a few clips. Uh, especially Jack Black. Mm-hmm. Who I must say was... I mean, I love Jack Black in animated films. I just think that he has such a like interesting voice. Yeah. That it, it works really well for a lot of roles. Especially... Uh, Kung Fu Panda and Bowser. And so I you think for, for Bowser that was the right right choice kind of uh, mm, I don't know, yeah. Voice. I think for the tone, uh-huh. right? I, I'm sure that they yeah, can find yeah, yeah. someone who was more maniacal evil, but for this kind of like light-hearted children's movie, which I think yeah, it is. Yeah, kind of a comedic villain in a sense as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I guess contrast that to the casting for Mario as Chris Pratt. Yeah. Comes from a comedy kind of... background. Chris Pratt, yeah. But I I feel like a lot of people were not happy with his being casted. He's been in quite a few films recently, right? Yeah, so from what I heard, again, I haven't seen this and you, you haven't either. Like, I think that the initial reaction was very negative, which is, and some people mm. still hold that negative reaction. But the people who have seen it, a lot of them have just said that it was like, he was fine. Like, he, okay. he wasn't the reason the movie wasn't amazing. But he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't a standout. Like He, he was, did not stand out, yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Actors do that. Um, some actors don't succeed after they've had Marvel success. Cough, cough, Tom Holland. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay okay dylan what's what's your uh favorite animated film of all time this time you can't say spider-man if i it can't was. say spider-man like you can say disney films though even though we're just disney dissing on them uh-huh. that's it's quite tough i'd say so- I, it's also that I would have watched quite a lot of them as a kid, so I, I don't know. Yeah, that's know. fine. Go for nostalgic value. I just of... want to know. Like, what do you hold dear? I'm... Like, maybe give me top three yeah. if you can't think of one. Okay, I, I'm going to go with uh, something slightly out. I'm going to say Megamind. Megamind, yes! Yeah. So underrated. I like Megamind. So, so underrated. It had the better it's just, minion. It, it did have the better minion. And... The story was really cool. And the character was really... All, all of the characters were very interesting as well. Yeah. As like a subversion of the, the, the superhero um, yeah. uh, genre. Uh, and also as a kid, I watched it like four times. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> I uh, think that I was more attached to it for the romantic element as a kid. I don't know. I've okay. always been like that. Like I just love... a. am a sucker for like a sappy like romance story so like the fact that it had that on top of like this really Mm. weird character that put on a super suit and went to fight this guy that he was no match for i don't know just something about it as a kid was like perfect for me and then no one cared about it i think a lot of people still didn't care about it until like kind of recently that it got like some resurgence Mm -hmm. but yeah it didn't do so well in box office as well i think when it came out. I did not. No. Yeah. Because, yeah. Just just didn't, 
I don't know. I guess it's a hard sell. And it, well, not really. It's I guess yeah, hard to say. I think the aesthetic is a lot different to like if we compare Meta Mega Mind to what was coming out at the time, um, and like and been? even comparing it to the general like this general Disney, uh, style that we've been discussing. I think it is different. Like it's got elements which are similar but i think it's quite different and it's more dark and like the main character is like wearing black and it's and he's kind of weird looking i don't know if it's the kind of character you yeah. typically root for if you're like 10 years old right no you... yeah if you if you see that on the all the promotional material like damn yeah, yeah i want to watch this film with a guy with a giant blue head it's like well yeah so like maybe not. the movies that came out at the time despicable me original how to train your dragon Tangled. Tangled. Uh, okay. And Shrek Forever After. <laughs> we don't talk about that one. No. <laughs> but those are like, I think at least Despicable Me, like those just kind of overshadow this blue monster guy that, I don't know, I feel like the movie is a lot more nuanced than it is for just kids, right? Like mm -hmm. the other films I just listed out, if you are a kid, you can kind of just watch at surface level and like enjoy it. I feel like Megamind, yeah. if you watch at surface level, can be a little bit weird, a little bit like unusual for a kid. Like, yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, like it's not your typical um, hero. I guess Despicable Me also not your typical hero. No, but that, Despicable Me spawned like a a, a large franchise yes, as well, and it had minions. It did have minions. Like. And it had the adorable minions that, like, all the kids love, right? Like, that's what I'm talking about surface level. I don't think you have yeah. an, a, really an adorable figure in Megamind that you can just be like, all the characters look a little bit older and more, like, mature and, like, not really for kids, right? There's no, like, throwaway joke character. And in a sense, I praise it for that. But for mm. the sake of its, like, success in cinemas, I don't think it did that because it didn't have that, like, throwaway like minion in that character is actually a decent character. He's not just yeah. a throwaway minion like in the minion in the despicable. Uh, yeah, not just a, a running gimmick or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What would your answer be then for favorite <laughs> animated? Film? So you know, I like to cook. A little bit of a. Oh yeah. A little bit of a chef, chef in training. It's hard, Literally right? Literally in training. I think that depends on what I evaluate it for, and there's a lot of thought. Like you said, like it's hard, right? But if we're just going for like nostalgia, and and also I for other reasons, but for a big nostalgia factor, I have to give it to Ratatouille. Okay, I, it, yeah, I could get behind that as well. It's such a uh, Ratatouille. I don't know. It's magical, man. It's magical. It, I think the first time I watched it, I don't remember, but just like this rat eating food and being like, wow, you know, closing his eyes and like seeing all the colors. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I yeah. relate to the rat. I, I just a rat and, you know, a little, little person who doesn't know his place in the world, but knows what he wants to be and knows what he can do and cap and is capable of. Mm. Yeah. Just beautiful. Because did did you try that as a kid, like eating yeah, food did, and yeah. seeing? Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> and trying try to like imagine the the flavors as as colors yeah. and and shapes and whatever. Yeah, and and yeah, I, I I think Ratatouille is a very good film as well. And and the message of like anyone can cook, right? Yeah. But I love rewatching this movie. It's just wholesome and yeah, great. Yeah. Very solid watch. I think I watched it during exam time two nice. years ago. Good, good choice. You know what I like <laughs> to do? Do you know Cinema Wins? Yeah. I like watching. So if I want to rewatch a movie, but I don't want to rewatch the whole movie, I just go on Cinema Wins and I either like put it on mute or I listen to him just <laughs> like talk about the movie because I don't know. It's something great about like a movie you enjoy being praised the whole time, and like you get yeah. enough of the snippets of the movie that you can enjoy. No, that, that's that's cool. That's a cool idea. He just recently released re-released his Wally episode, and Wally was good too. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, also a similar message. Well, it's like we can still save 
the earth, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's got its messages about global warming and, like, overproduction mm. and consumerism, right? But then it's also got the whole, like, finding your place and... Be, I, I, no, I think the biggest message is the whole... Uh, I, so I just recently rewatched this, so this line is in my head. So it's where the captain stands up to the computer. And oh, yeah. he's like, I don't want to to be alive, I want to live. If that makes sense. Mm, mm-hmm. So it's like they're breathing and they're like on the ship and they they're doing their everyday things, but they're not living. They're not experiencing. They're not suffering. Yeah. To to really grow. It's just a put like a comfortable life without challenge, without any sort of meaning. Just going around in those chairs. Mm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on? animation as a medium of storytelling versus a genre as a medium of storytelling i think the easiest way for me to get to the question is let's say we're at the oscars right yeah should animation okay this question does is like can be yes or no but i think the discussion that stems from it is more interesting so okay should films just be judged based on actual like if it's an action film, a romance film, or whatever, and the sure. fact that it uses animation to tell its story is not relevant to whether it's part of a category or a genre. So, okay. so I would, for example, compare Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with uh, Mission Impossible. Or maybe that's... No, no. Within... With, with, like, with live action Spider-Man if it came out in the same year or okay. or Doctor Strange or something like that. So like you're this, saying like not having it as its own genre. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah because category. It's, because is it, is it a genre? Is something being animated oh. a genre? It's become one. It is technically one. Yeah. But is it? Yeah. Like if you define what genre means? I, I guess in some sense it's saying like separating out movies which use cgi in some way and movies which don't but so now now i think this comes back around quite nicely with what i was saying earlier about mm. films that use both so where do you draw the line right i think spider-man across the spider verse is very clearly an animated film even though it has cameos of live action characters yeah but let's what how do you draw the line of like percentage of a film that needs to be live action to count towards a live action genre versus an animated genre? Mm-hmm. I guess you'd have to draw on examples again, right? Like I, I, I don't know if it, well, you, you said you haven't seen uh, who framed Roger Rabbit. I would probably characterize that as a live. Uh, <laughs> see, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, is it? Uh, I'm looking at sh- screenshots now and like trying to see. Yeah, it is. I that is a live action film. I would say it, it uses the animation in the same way as a film would use CGI. Okay. I guess now that's that's tricky though because animation or animated films rather can accomplish things which you can't do in live Ex- action. Exactly. And I love that point that you just made because I don't think enough films are using said animation to its fullest mm. because I think that, and and this point is very clearly exemplified by the fact that uh, all these Disney films are getting live action remakes and you can only get live action remakes if your original media didn't need to be animated. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah. If, if if Beauty and the Beast was a story that was truly about the animation, they could never turn it into a live action musical. But they did, so it didn't need mm. to be an animation. So what I'm trying to get at is that I think that when the animation is used purely as a medium, as a way of telling your story, it can okay. almost be compared to a normal film this is my argument right you you can almost just say that this is a normal film but when animation studios and and artists take time in using their medium and transforming it from just an action film into an animated action film into something mm-hmm. that's now adapted from just 
you know, drawings that move to drawings that move for a reason. And examples of this are hard to come by, but I do think that there are elements of this that show up in Spider-Verse, right? And okay. and when you do that, I think that's when you can draw the line between something that should be a genre versus something that is just a medium. But it's still all very like vague and like someone needs to decide and then it, you know, if you use a little bit or use a lot. But but I don't know. I think it's interesting that I don't think it's ever that black and white that and I think that it's all a little bit sad sometimes when some films don't get as much praise as they should because it's an animation, because it's been relegated mm. to that category. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see that. I think you are, yeah, there, there is definitely something there um, uh, in, in what you're saying. I, I guess kind of a test, if I'm right in understanding, it, is that if you could remake it in live action almost directly, then it, it sh- could be compared to a live action film. Yeah. Is that, yeah. that what That's you're saying? That's kind of what yeah. I'm saying. Uh, there's some more things to discuss regarding that, but I don't yeah. know. It, it's it's all a question about like categorization anyway, and we mm-hmm. love to categorize as humans, so yeah, kind of like just another way that I'm categorizing in a different way. Don't get me started on what counts as anime and what doesn't, right? <laughs> like that's a <laughs> yeah. whole another discussion that's got a whole another bag of worms. Um. So shall we move on to a final topic? Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, and that is AI and its implications on the animation industry. And I guess we can kick it off with, do you, I mean, it's it's a pretty big question. Do you think uh, use of AI is going to, I guess, kill the animation in, or, well, no jobs as animators? No, no. I don't think it will. Uh, I think, so have you heard about all the AI art incest that's happening? No. So essentially these algorithms, they are starting to feed into themselves. I see. Okay. And just because of the nature of how that works and how they work, uh, I think you have some yeah. understanding machine learning, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the outputs are getting worse because they're going like, to start spiraling off. Yeah, kind of. exactly. You're like. You're outputting something that's like low quality and then using that as input and then keep doing that and yeah. eventually. So the, the that's why I use the word incest. It's like it's trying to feed into itself and constantly. Well, I, I haven't mm-hmm. termed that term. I haven't coined that term. That was something I read online, one of the articles. But yeah, so it and I think that ultimately these algorithms, they are tools. And when mm-hmm. when digital drawings came out and when the computer came out, everyone said that every job was lost and some jobs are lost i don't think um i can't think of an example off the top of my head but there are jobs that have been made redundant but people upskill and people change um yeah it's not like the death of a career it's just changed in the way that you do things like engineers back in the day it would have been all hand-drawn schematics and stuff and now they use cad yeah uh like it it's just a change in the tools that you're using. And I, I, I mean, I guess perhaps the number of jobs could be affected. Yeah, I mean, but like the getting into the whole job market thing is like not really... It's a separate thing. ...what we want to go into too much. But yeah, yeah. I think that... I think that people right now are a little bit scared and it makes them uh, hesitant to change. Because... Just from seeing the reactions of, so, uh, we both haven't seen Secret Wars yet, the new Marvel TV show about, mm. uh, with Nick Fury, but a we, Secret Invasion, you mean? Sorry, Wars sorry. is the movie. Actually, yeah, yeah sorry. Wars is the movie coming out. Yeah, yes. Um, actually, yeah. um, <laughs> yes, Secret Invasion, um, but but. Yeah, that there was the whole like AI art controversy for the was it ending screens or beginning screens? I think it's the intro. Oh, intro. And like, I don't know, a lot of people did not like that. What are your thoughts? Some yeah, some very very strong reaction, negative reactions against that, and kind of saying, uh, why well, obviously you can't ca- characterize everyone's statements, but it's like just unethical. 
but it, they tried to frame it as uh, they being Marvel. It, it's it's kind of meant to be unsettling, yeah. in the same way that the scrolls are kind of impersonating, you know, people in the show. And I I guess it's what it, it's an artistic decision or. Maybe it's a financial decision, framed as an artistic decision. I don't decision. think it's a financial. Is it really a financial they, decision? They, they, could, they could just spend the money and, I, I, yeah. and hire some like, artists to terms, actually do it. In terms of how much that would cost for their production, like it is expensive to get artists, but like making yeah. intro slides for a show that they can re re reuse, I think that's like relatively to their production budget quite low. So I don't think it's yeah. a monetary decision. No. Yeah, artistic. Yes, but also I think there's an element of like using this controversy for publicity, right? Uh, must be. They've thought this through. That's as why well, that I mean that may have played into it. As That's I, I I don't think the reviews have been incredible for oh, Secret Invasion. Oh, it's, it's gotten better. I think it's gotten better. Has it? The reviews, okay. Like as more com came in, it's still not amazing. Uh -huh. But I actually think it's worth a watch. And also, did you see okay. the whole? Uh, on real news, uh, uh, like uh, channels, they've been sending actors to like get into the camera shots, like oh, really? uh, wearing like the the makeup, so they're like scrolls oh on actual live TV. So it looks like, for, as publicity. I think that's great marketing. Great. That is good marketing. Yeah, yeah that's really good marketing. I I think, and I also think this is the kind of thing where it's like. The reviews are not there, but I, I actually think it might become quite an interesting watch in the end. So I will eventually get around to watching it. But yeah, it mm. initially it might be a little bit rough, but I think I'll get there. And reviews mm. aren't everything, right? Reviews are... No, yeah. They, they, they give you a general idea, but uh, I've seen some reviews be very off the mark. Um, For me personally, right? Like, it's all personal. Like, you know. Yeah, you, you of course. It's entirely subjective, yes, right? exactly. That's the whole point. Yeah. Like you, you, you saw She-Hulk. I did. And you uh, somewhat enjoyed it unfortunately. to a degree. Uh, to a degree. But, to a degree. But you managed to watch all of it despite the reviews, so, you know. Yeah. I think, I think there's, a, there's still some value in... in exactly. The, there's some entertainment value in these things still, no matter what. Yeah. But uh, Marvel discussions for another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess I think um sort of AI stuff is great for prototyping things quickly. Yeah. And I, I've seen some sort of case studies of uh clients using it to uh like prototype their ideas for a design and then going to an actual designer and then saying, Can you make it something like this? And it's a way of sort of getting their ideas out quickly without needing the sort of skill um to do it i, I guess quote unquote properly um and i think that's an interest way of interesting way of doing it yeah that's a great way uh, I, I love that i think that when you when you're actually using your their tools kind of as intended right like yeah i don't think i know like all these natural language systems and all of that have come out right but they're more at this point. I feel like they're still on the gimmicky side, and what what's important is that there needs to be regulation, there needs to be laws, and companies and governments are working on it, and eventually they'll be put in place. But mm -hmm. like I, for me, the big thing, especially if we come back to like the artistic side of things, is like this whole like plagiarism uh, issue. Yes. Right. If you've drawn all of your uh, raw data yourself, like you've drawn a lot of different variations mm -hmm. of the kind of stuff you want to make and your art style, and you feed it into yeah. your algorithm and you, you run your AI, like fair, by, fair play. But like the moment you start using other people's art to run your algorithm, yes, the output is technically not not exactly the same as anything you've used but mm. just the nature of all of this is very like morally gray and yeah i think to protect real artists and 
things that they have made and done and the credit they deserve, there needs to be some kind of like line drawn with this kind of stuff, especially for art. Yeah, art's a big a big part of it, and I mean, uh, also like y- use creating AI stuff with people's likenesses or voices that mm. also needs to be mm-hmm. regulated uh, uh, in a way that it isn't at the moment. Like it's, I know that the AI president videos so are very funny. funny. They're so funny, <laughs> but it's uh, already there. There are some sort of scams in place where yeah, people yeah, get enough audio clips of you and sound, then they can really, create if no one told me and you just like listen to like a, a clip like a short clip or like a snippet yeah i wouldn't have been yeah, able yeah. to tell like no yeah exactly it's only when you're like kind of looking for it and some voices are different like some voices are really mm-hmm. easy to tell but there's some voices and you're not looking for it it can fool you and it hasn't yet like i haven't been fooled by it yet i think but I feel mm-hmm. like it's not too far away from being able to. Yeah, I mean, the further away you get from the sort of standard data that it was trained on, like yeah. American voices, the sort of more limited it is at the moment. But de- definitely it's going to get a lot better. Yeah, and, and very what, quickly, what, probably. What happens when these AIs pass, like, those those tests, you know? Pass all their, the Turing, the Turing test. test. Yeah. And, uh... That that's already happened, kind of, right? Wasn't there like an AI that like kind of tricked someone into doing something already? I, I forget. There's so many cases. I think so. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's, it's something like that. Ah, uh, scary, a little bit, but not really. But yeah, a little, 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 little bit. bit. I I think it depends. I I am on 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 the topic of um, uh, like regulation and and copyright stuff. I I believe I would need to ch- uh, check this. But I, my impression was that Japan have just said it's fine, you can train it on whatever you want. Okay. Uh, and I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make these claims without. But Japan um, are also enforcing laws about. Uh, I'm pretty sure now, like mangakas have to register when they release manga and stuff now. Okay. Like register with their ID and stuff. They can't just like release it without without a real name. Um. Mm. So they're starting. They've got different regulations that are being put in place for artists and stuff as well. There's yeah, like, every country is a little bit different. Everyone's got their different beliefs, and I don't know. As long as you're on Twitter, I follow a lot of artists on Twitter, and almost mm-hmm. all of them, actually all of them, I don't think a single artist I follow on Twitter. These are like, of course, anime artists, right? But still, artists. Yeah. Uh, I don't think a single one has been happy or pleased with this AI emergency. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Honestly. The thing with AI art, though, is like, you can still tell quite well. Yeah. Um, at the moment. Yeah, for now. <laughs> it, it can't draw hands. It can't. It really like can't. me, I can't either. Yes, but so it's still limited no, in no, that No, 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 no. You say that right. But you can create the anatomy of a hand easily. It doesn't understand what the anatomy of a hand is. Exactly. So it will never be able to do that until it gets more, uh, more examples and more way, like algorithms to help it. But at, at in its current state, it doesn't know what it's creating. It just is creating. It's kind yeah, of... like it doesn't have a concept of what a hand is. Yeah, exactly. It it's just seen like, I don't know, maybe millions of examples of hands in different positions, and it will try and. Yeah, but then it merges create with them. something. Yeah. yeah, it merges them. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Japan has declared that using data sets for training IA, AI models doesn't doesn't violate copyright law, Ooh. which is pretty interesting. Ooh. Big big animation industries over there. Yeah. Uh, wow. When was this? I mean, overworked as well. Yeah. Um, this article. Maybe they is... need the, Maybe they need the help. 5th of June, 2023. Wow, that's recent. It's a pretty recent. I mean, that that's... Wow, that's a crazy conclusion, I think. I... It... Like... I think... At a very simplistic level, it doesn't, right? It really doesn't. You're not copying... I know copyright's not like that, but you're not directly mm. copying anything. But 
I don't know. It's just. It's tough. I don't know. <laughs> it's. Uh, we're not in positions to like make decisions on this stuff, nor are we no. probably qualified to understand every component of it for all the parties involved. But neither are the people making these decisions, though, right? Like, no. yes, they know. They're just, yeah. They know to an extent all these things, and of course, they make like they are smart people, and they yes, but they. I don't think people really can grasp all the stakeholders for this kind of stuff. I think there's a lot more than just artists and creators or people who create AI and people who use AI. I think there's way more um, who are involved. Yeah. No, exactly. Oh. It's, and it's going to be an even bigger topic in the future as it starts impacting more and more of our lives. And Yeah. I, th yeah. I think I was at dinner and my 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 family was like, Oh yeah, you know, all this AI stuff and it's reaching into art now. But you know the one thing it can't do, it can't make food. So you got a future, Henry. <laughs> so I was like, let's go. But then also at the back of my mind, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be able to make food in the next like um uh, like ten years. I wouldn't be surprised. Less than Oh yeah. I I would imagine like five years even because there there are already robots that make like yeah, pasta so and stuff. Here's my theory crafting for <laughs> these Maybe I'm giving away the million dollar idea here, but it's like, mm. so you got these robots that can make stuff, right? But now mm -hmm. you train the AI on recipes, which people have already done, but you train yeah. it on recipes for flavor profiles. And then you, you, okay. get, you get optimal flavor profiles out of the AI. And then you get the robots to, to so you basically, you break down each ingredient into... Yeah. certain chemicals or certain things and then all you have to do is so you use your ai you get a list of what components it needs and then the robot just picks apart these like components based on percentages of how much of the like chemical or or flavor or whatever it needs from the recipe and then it puts it all into a tube and blends it up and then it's this this perfect liquid of food this perfect liquid that has the best flavor possible for what so it's just like a flavor a shot of that flavor exactly. whatever it is but perfected because of how much training perfected but <laughs> it's it, it's not just flavor which is important though it's, yes. it's like it's texture it's the full experience yes. you know but some people that, don't that, care yeah. some people don't care true there there i think like, there's a lot of people i don't know like there, even if you don't care, there's some people who don't care to certain degrees, right? It's a, it's a range, mm. because I think in the same vein that some people don't give, don't care about whether art is like made by a human or not made by a human. I think although we're seeing like the overwhelming ne negative reaction to some of this AI products, there are people who just yeah. like use it and just don't care, or are the ones creating it. Like they they, they mm -hmm. see it as an opportunity, so I think that there will always be resistance, but you know that's with every innovation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I don't know about widespread adoption or I I mean the the main thing is going to be when it starts replacing people's jobs. That's going to be oh, it already kind sort of, of has. Tipping point. Yeah. Do you know that if you are a, what do you call it, a prompt engineer, you can get a pretty decent salary? Really? It's a, th it's a real job position oh, gosh. already. Um, you, you, you can get a six-figure job. Of course, it's not easy, right? You're not going to walk through a door and get yeah. a job. But the point is it exists. And I'm not saying that those jobs have replaced other jobs, but... I think that jobs are evolving and they have always been evolving and that, I don't know, maybe in the future, instead of, I don't think, okay, if we're just isolating it to, to animation, right? I don't think it's going to replace mm -hmm. jobs, but I think that a requirement to be an animator in 10 years might be the ability to use AI effectively in your work. Yeah. Yeah. Like interfacing with it is going to exactly. be a key skill. Yes. Yeah. Uh yeah. So that was fun. But you know what would it be was? more fun? A lightning round, Dylan. Oh. 
Uh, okay. Yep, so we're about to do a, a this or that segment. And if you don't know what that is, Ooh. it's uh, where I will say two or more things. And Dylan, for this week, will have to say whether he prefers this or that. So it's just a little fun thing. And then we Very will also, funky. and then I also have three questions at the end, just to test your general uh, Spider-Man knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. You're not allowed to Google as well. Please don't Google. And my hands are off my keyboard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dylan. Would you rather go back in time or to the future? Ooh. I want to go to the future. Mickey Mouse or Dora the Explorer? Mickey Mouse. Kung Fu Panda or Cars? Better film franchise. Oh. <sighs> Kung Fu Panda, I'm going to say. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or Marvel? I'm you have, have to, to go. You have to account for every TV show and every extended universe of all three. It will get factored in. All factored in. You have to... You have to... The entire fandom. Entire fandom. Oh my gosh. So what was Star Wars? Lord of the Rings uh, Marvel, or Marvel? Marvel or Lord of the Rings. Well, throw in Harry Potter as well, since you're British. <laughs> okay. In terms of overall quality, I'm gonna have to go with Lord of the Rings. Ooh, okay, based. Um, okay. Comic book adult version of Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy? Uh, Mary Jane, have you seen? There was this comic recently. Yeah, yeah there, was, there was a good comic recently. Yeah. Well, no, I, I don't think we're talking that. about the same one, but I have seen Mary Jane in the comic. <laughs> There's one where she was with Black Cat and oh, they yes. went on a side quest. Yes. To st- Best live action Spider Man suit. OG, Amazing Spider Man, or Home fr- home Series. Home franchise? Marvel. Mar- MCU. The MCU. Uh, yeah. Spider Man. Home. Uh, can I Google this one? Yeah, you can, yeah. Okay. OG suits only. Um, not, not like Iron Spider or. Or, um, so you mean the homecoming suit? Homecoming suit. Homecoming suit. Spider Man one suit. Amazing Spider Man one suit. Uh, I for me, I think it's got to be the Amazing Spider Man suit. Oh, a lot of people say that. Um, okay, organic or physical web shooters. It's, it's pretty grim, but organic is far more practical. practical. Yeah. It's yeah. Never run out. Although maybe well, he does run out. He does. Right? Yeah. Well, he has like a mental block. In but he one never of the films, ran out, he? right? No, I don't. I don't think he did. But there must. Be, I think in the comics he has run out before. Oh. I would have to check. But in the comics, <laughs> is he organic web shooting? It depends. Often? It depends. Not it, often. Uh, not super often. Okay, uh, sure. here's the last one, anyway. and here's the last okay. one, and I think this is the hardest one. Uh-huh. It's Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin, or mm-hmm. Heath Ledger as the Joker. Oh, this is tough, man. This one is hard. I know, that's why I said it's the hardest one. Uh-huh. I'm glad I'm asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> I think... <sighs> You can't use like I know that one of them got a an Oscar and like you know and and also he has passed away, right? But like just like just performance. Just, just on performance. performance alone. Don't think about anything. Else. Don't think about the movie either. Just the performance. Just the performance. I don't wanna Okay. Like the movie itself will also change how you feel as well. So I'm one. gonna go with uh, Heath Ledger. Oh, I think. Uh, oh, okay, okay. That's, that's with some difficulty. Yes, I know, I know. I think that would have been my answer too. Okay, now here Just. are the here are the long form questions that have one word answers. Uh huh. Well, longer than one kind of one word answers. Okay. <clears throat> okay. No googling. Close your tabs. No googling. Uh, in my hands what, are off my keyboard. In what year did the original Spider-Man film starring Tobey Maguire release? You can ask for a hint. Uh, 
What's the hint gonna be? The <laughs> it's give, gonna be the decade. It will reduce it by. It'll give you a range. Okay. But you get less points. The original. Oh man. Uh, Shoot your shot. My web shot. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go with two. Oh yeah, that's a good start. Two thousand one. Oh, it's so close. It's two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Spider-Man Peter Parker's first appearance was in Amazing Fantasy fifteen, issue fifteen. In yep. what year, and for a bonus point, month was this issue published? Was it sixty-seven? No, it was before that. Before that. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll go for the hint. Uh, it's between 60 and 65. Is it 65? No, it's 62. It's 62. Oh. August 1962. Okay. Okay. Last question. <clears throat> uh huh. Of the most recent uh, six US presidents, whose favorite superhero is Spider Man? <laughs> The six most recent, okay. I can tell you them if you'd like. Yeah, go for it. Bush Senior. Bush Senior. Clinton. Mm-hmm. Bush Junior. Yeah. Obama. Yeah. Trump. Trump. And, and Biden. See, none of them really have the uh, qualities of Spider-Man. What? <laughs> I want to... <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't so expect any of them to have reason, the of Various reasons. Um, I, who would say that? There, I'm gonna go with. Is it Obama? It is Obama. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's the end of the fun segment. Thank you for listening this far. If you've been listening. Yeah, it'd be really cool if you were listening. Um. Thank you. We are a monthly film podcast and we will be streaming on the usual suspects like uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple and a couple other, I believe. And yeah, if you've got any feedback, questions or whatever, you can feel free to contact us. Or if you want to sponsor us, yeah. you can contact us. Yeah, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, please. <laughs> Mr. Um... Beast, please. <laughs> we're, we're, we're both kind of struggling students that want need need the money yes thank you yep thank you mr beast thank you mr beast he, he may not be sponsoring but he's in our hearts he's our spiritual sponsor exactly i'd like to say yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll get some real sponsors on in the future but yeah <laughs> maybe this is us signing off thanks for hearing us out <laughs>